Yeah. Hold on. You're telling me you spent a million. You're telling me you spent a million dollars on drugs. Tell them. No, go on. Tell them. Tell them why we are all rejoiced here today. Why are you still in your PJs? It's clearly an intervention. It is clearly a freaking intervention. On whom, though? Is it on you? Is it on people you're talking about today? Is it on all of us? Is it on the whole goddamn society? Because it should be. Okay, so dramatic moment over. I have joined us all here today in order to talk about my childhood hopes and dreams being crushed. It happens only so often that a friend of mine actually sends me a video surrounding a true crime topic and they're like, hey, you are interested in this stuff? Like, have you ever heard of this? And usually the answer is either yes or like, oh my god, this is sick, like, I need to research on it. On this occasion, the answer was more like the video that they sent me only scratched the surface and I need to dig deeper. So out of my own interest, I was on like article 10 or 15 and I was like, maybe I should put this like on paper, maybe we should talk about this, because people don't talk about it the right way. They don't seem to be asking the right questions and seeing all of the red flags that I have seen while just even having a brief glance at this topic. And somehow the topic is honey boo boo. Now, this calls for a disclaimer, because if this is your first time, if this is what got you to this channel, I cover true crime. So, a disclaimer moment right here, so that you can switch this off if you're watching it in the presence of children. This video contains themes of child abuse and is meant to be only watched by adults. Viewer discussion is very much highly so advised. That being said, just before we dive in, if I see a single negative comment on Honey Boo Boo or any of Mama June's children, for that matter, I will delete your life. I don't know how that is done online, but I will find a way. I will most definitely delete that comment and block the shit out of you and then figure out how to delete your life as well, because this is a Black Mirror kind of episode. It's not. Don't lie to them. My is the name. Honey Boo Boo is the game, is the topic of the day. Let's dive in. When it comes to the Shannon family, it all truly begins and ends with Mama June, its matriarch. Empieza el matriarcado. Mama June was born June Shannon in 1979 in Georgia to parents Sandra and Melvin Shannon. Not much is known about her early years, we just know that her parents divorced when she was two years old. June had an older sister, and she dropped out of high school because she was pregnant with her first child, Anna. Now, let me pull up the family tree here to explain this next bit to you. June ended up having four daughters. When it comes to one of them, the father is unknown. June is really unsure who the father was. We'll speak about that one a bit further along this video. But the other three were all daughters to the men who have served some time in prison. So, let's run down the family tree. Anna was born in 1994, when June was only 15, and I've seen different reports that June wanted to give her up for an adoption to, like, her cousins or aunt and uncle, because she was 15, she didn't know how to take care of the child and wasn't just financially able. But in the end, it was her mom, Shannon, that basically raised both of them, one as a teenager and the other one as a granddaughter. What Anna didn't know when she was little was that her father was David Dunn. When Anna was four, David was sent to court for a child support hearing, and in 1995, he went back to prison and was sentenced for stealing a handgun, and then in 1998, he was back in prison for stealing cartons of cigarettes. So, he'd be landing in prison for theft, and that somehow will be the lowest of the charges on this list. Two years after Anna, Jessica was born, and Jessica was a daughter of Michael Anthony Ford, who dated June only a few months before she became pregnant. We don't know about Ford's criminal history before he met June and before she birthed Jessica, but in 2005, he ended up in prison, serving more than two years for sexual exploitation of a child after which he was put on the sex offender registry. And he was also charged for passing bad checks, so he was a bit of a scammer. He was passing bad checks and was shoplifting at this Walmart where he worked. 
In the year 2000, Lauren was born, and Mama June would always go to say that she was unsure of who the dad was. It was actually between this time and 2005 that we really have a gap in Mama June's dating history that will yet again become relevant a bit later, that nobody really speaks about. But this is where we have most of the gap, where we don't really know what she was getting up to in her love life. Another struggle that I had when researching this topic was finding what she was getting up to financially, what she was doing to support this growing family. I found different reports saying that she worked at a warehouse. There was one that she worked at McDonald's, and that was reported because she actually stole from them, and allegedly charges were dropped later. The report here was that in 1998, she was cashing bad checks and stole around $3,000 from a safe in McDonald's, but in 2004, all of those charges got dismissed. Finally, in 2005, Alana was born, and she was fathered by David Michael, who went under Sugar Bear on that show, and he also had a criminal history. He was sort of fresh out of prison when he met June from all accounts, because in 1998 he was sentenced to five years to serve in prison for robbing campsites and setting a camper on fire. Nobody elaborates on this, mind you. It's like not like he set fire on an actual physical person. People just brush out that, like, oh yeah, he had this criminal history. Like, yeah, sounds, sounds completely legit and normal and peaceful. At this point, Mama June, David, Sugar Bear, and Honey Boo Boo, and the rest of the family are all living peacefully together in their home in Georgia. And that is when TLC started running auditions for a show called Toddlers and Tiaras in 2011. The show was aired in 2012, from what I remember, but they started recording in 2011. The family, and especially Honey Boo Boo, became fan favorite really quickly because of the chemistry that she had with the cameraman. They were laughing in all of the takes because of the nonsense that would come out of her mouth that she would just think of on the spot. Like, most of her quotes made zero sense. Dollar makes me dollar, Honey Boo Boo. Ain't no wrong with being a little gay. Everybody's a little gay. When Mama said we were going to Six Flags, I was so excited. I almost came out of my yeah. That'll be weird. I'll be riding around to just in my bones. It'll be weird. But she loved the limelight, and Mama June did as well. She would fully be feeding into this limelight. She would be giving Alana this go-go juice, which is a mix of Mountain Dew and Red Bull. There was a lot of speculation about what was actually in this juice, but people said sometimes there was maybe even alcohol. But the point is that the actual bottle had the equivalent of about two cups of coffee. So giving that to like five, six year old child was a bit controversial, and you can probably see why. And that would, of course, make her super hyper, which played along with the views, played along with what the public wanted to see. They wanted to see drama, they wanted to see one child take over this complete show. And Alana just had a chemistry with everybody on the set. Question? I, I got a question here. Yes? Yes, the girl in the front? Why are these shows so resistant to conducting background checks? It's really not that hard. It's toddlers and tiaras. Toddlers are involved. And you are just gonna ignore the whole ass history that one of the moms dated criminals in the past, which would be really easy to find, especially if you're in the US, especially if you pull up like sex offenders list, or just check for people's mugshots. I could not find a zilch of information about them vetting a single person on a show that technically deals with kids on a day-to-day basis. What if she was to be dating a sex offender at the time, who would be in presence of all of these children? And notoriously, notoriously reality TV shows are bad for this. This isn't just on TLC being crap at doing this. From dating game killer Rodney Alcala, who actually died in prison this week, devil possess his soul, please, who actually appeared, I think it was in the 80s or 70s, on dating game shows in the middle of his killing spree. Not to mention 90 Day Fiancé. Literally, on that show, unless you have a criminal record, you better not apply. You don't apply. Don't waste your freaking time. 
There are articles on articles, lists on lists, on how many contestants on 90 Day Fiancé have a criminal rap sheet that people just never cared about. No, let's just send them to a different country and make sure that extradition is really kind of impossible. Let's just risk everything that we can and never put this person behind bars and let's endanger another family. Just like that, the season Alana was on ended, and because of her popularity, she got a spin-off show. TLC actually created a show focusing only on the Shannon family, titled Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. Here we slowly but surely see a shift, because Alana, of course, on a show that is called Toddlers and Tiaras, will be the center of attention. Here, however, the show follows other members of the family. So other members of the family start kind of taking that attention a bit and passing it on to them, especially Mama June. During the two years that the show was running, we see Mama June's growing addictions. At first, it starts with her using coupons to buy groceries, to get supplies for the house, but then when you actually look at the house, you see that there is a bit of a bigger issue at heart, which is that she started hoarding based on all of these couponing and saving up. My mama nickname is Two Like laundry detergents right there, the stuff you wash your dishes with, over here you got deodorants, which are out of line. I'm, I'm in what they call an extreme coupon, and I am proud of it. The reason why I coupon is because pints are fairly expensive. I would say all together in pageantry, we have spent about eight nine thousand dollars, but that's okay. Um, I've saved it all with my coupons. Here with it. Thanks to me because I want to win money. You ready for the hotel? We ain't got a swimming pool, unfortunately, this time. Come on. A dollar makes me have a money boo boo. <laughs> This kid will forever be adorable, and that is exactly what took away so much attention from the actual problem, all of the red flags that people didn't see. Because when you combine the addictions, you know that they are probably going to continue, they might transform, they might not be hoarding in the future once she actually accumulates some money. Mama June might develop a different kind of addiction. But also, with the go-go juice, we're just really desperately trying to put her daughter in the spotlight to begin with. You can really see that Mama June isn't such a stranger to not doing everything by the book in order to get views and in order to get attention on Honey Boo Boo, but also on herself. You know how some parents live through their children? They want them to become doctors, lawyers, anything that they either couldn't study or wouldn't want to do themselves. It really strikes me how in this case it started off as that. It started off as Mama June just living through her daughter. But then she kind of got a bit of a main character syndrome. I was like, you know what? Like, you you can still be there, Alana, yeah? It's like a part of this family. But let's just drive all of this attention a bit more to me. Like, I'm an interesting character. Let's have spin-off shows about me. Why not? It's not like that was my intention from the start. So why was such a show cut off after only two seasons? Surely people still wanted to tune in. Well, TMZ and other tabloids started spinning a story that Mama June is actually dating a sex offender. There are conflicting accounts here. TMZ has stated that they have had a picture of Mama June and this guy Mark McDaniel in bed that somebody leaked. The only one I have seen is the two of them in like a parking lot sort of laughing and it might or might not look like they're holding hands. But this wasn't all, because once this came out, yes, Entertainment Weekly, TMZ, everybody was on it getting interviews from June, but her family was pissed, because this sex offender was somebody that she dated in the past. Remember when I said we will go back to that period between year 2000 and 2005? And also, this isn't the same sex offender that fathered one of her children. This isn't Michael Ford. Completely different person. 
This is the person that repeatedly abused her daughter Anna for at least six months between 2002 and 2003. And Anna did report it, but what tells me everything about the relationship between Anna and Mama June was that she went to report it to the elementary school teacher. Once the teacher contacted the family, it was Mama June's mom, Sandra, who filed a police report. After this, Mark McDaniel, the person that abused Mama June's daughter, Anna, all those years ago, and that she is now allegedly dating again, was charged for child molestation and he served 10 years in prison. This thing is just horrifying, because the court will hear that McDaniel showed Anna sexually graphic videos that he fondled and sexually assaulted her when she was only eight. I won't play Anna was on Dr. Phil, I won't play that, but let me just play parts of the interviews once E.T. actually interviewed Mama June on this whole situation, like years later. Because this is just so rage-inducing. Perspective on Mark. Do something. He did something awful. I mean, I understand that. Yeah, he did then, but since he's been out, I hadn't heard, heard of him doing nothing wrong. Do you worry about him being around Alana? To an extent, yes, I do. Alana is nine years old, just one year older than Anna was when the molestation by June's ex-boyfriend Mark happened. How do you feel about him being around Alana and June allowing that? Um, it's something that never should have happened, and when I found out about it, it hurt me. If he came around again, what would you do? If he came around again, probably nothing. I guess I'm just having a hard time, June, because as a mother, I would still have such intense I mean, I do negative like feelings like towards like someone it. who hurt my okay. child. Okay, yes, there's hurt there. There's anger there. Do you believe her? Yeah, I do. You hesitated. You paused. Why? In a way, I do believe her. In a way, I don't. Why not? If you look at this picture right here, it looks like they're holding hands. Oh my God. I always, if you right. watch me walk, I always walk with that hand, but that left looking, hand. You're looking at laughing because at him. Because so he's even if you're not holding hands, you're laughing with him. The but man who picture, molested your dog. But in that picture, there's not, this room is a huge room. There's not this man here. Knowing this man, Mark, was convicted of molesting your daughter. Why would you let him around your family again? Okay, the very first time that we saw him was a coincidence. Do you believe your daughter was molested by Mark? I do believe that, you know, something happened. You did not read these court documents. I did not. You would be horrified if you read the details of what she said he did to her. I told Anna that um, not to bring up the past again. It would She's be hard for trying me. to heal, and, and though. I'm so confused because when people saw you with him, they were angry. They were outraged that you could let this man who molested your daughter back into your life. Do you not understand why people are so upset about that? It's not like I'm seeing him every, every day. I'm but at all, why would you see him at all? Is Honey Boo Boo in danger? Just one of the about 100 things that drove me insane in this case was this exact narration of, is Honey Boo Boo in danger? What about Anna? What about her not giving a blatant shit about her daughter being sexually accosted, like sexually abused as a child? And what about all of the other children? Because as this crew is following the family, the family is growing. What I didn't mention is I think two of Mama June's daughters got pregnant also when they were teenagers. So this show is now following this whole family. There are other toddlers and people of the same age that Anna was. Like, you're putting the whole family in danger. And she just blatantly denies that she has been in contact with this man. She just said, like, you know, they met at the parking lot, and she just pushed that whole narration away, not realizing the gravity of the situation and never acknowledging that she might be in the wrong here, that there is a problem. To wrap this saga up, according to the law enforcement officials, McDaniel was not in the violation of legal requirements, making sure that he stays away from Anna, who at the time was 20, and as I said, had a child of her own. So, 
to wrap that up, nothing really happened here. But what this exposure really served towards is that June, for the first time, actually started claiming that Jessica and Lorraine are actually fathered by the same man. Remember? The number one sex offender in this story? Michael Ford. This was never confirmed, paternity tests were never done, nothing really came out of it, except that she apparently said it to Entertainment Weekly. TLC didn't fully give up on Mama June. Of course, she's the center of attention now. So, yes, they did cancel the show, but they released a special Honey Boo Boo The Lost Episodes with some bonus footage, never seen footage. Funny how when you say never seen footage, it actually reads, we just are taking more money because of this drama that is happening. We are profiting on the back of a sex offender scandal. Yeah, but funny how that reads differently in my head. Of course, Mama June wouldn't stay off the air for long. In 2016, she was a contestant on this show, Marriage Boot Camp. The list of contestants on this show includes people from Geordie Shore, E! Entertainment, all of those reality TV shows that you would watch when you would get back from school if you are as old as me. Well, here, Mama June appeared with Sugar Bear, and this kind of wrapped up that marriage, because Sugar Bear's unfaithful online behavior was exposed on the show. But it wouldn't be long that she would be off the air, because in 2017, she got a deal with VTV to start a show that is all about her, called Mama June from Not to Hot. Her family would still have an appearance on the show, but the focus really was on Mama June and her weight loss, following all of the surgeries that she had, amounting to about $75,000, and then how she maintained that weight. What was that, the girl in the back? Boring. Okay, calm your tits. A new man entered June's life, and drama starts again, okay? You good, you good. Did anybody else notice that this story is not about Honey Boo Boo any longer? Like, when was the last time I mentioned this girl's name? Mama June's new man and the guy with the most retarded name in the universe in the history of names, Eugene Gino Doak. Just like every other man that Mama June has dated, had the longest rap sheet. At this point, you kind of have to question, is it written on their forehead? Do they need to submit that to start dating her, to be on this show to begin with? Gino, though, had a long rap sheet of charges including burglary, theft, criminal damage to property that sent him to the prison twice. In 1996, he pled guilty to the burglary charge and was sentenced to three years in prison, but only served three months behind bars. In 2009, he stole a 500 cargo trailer that belonged to the Methodist Church. When he was out on bail for that charge, he admitted himself to this healthcare center because he tried to commit suicide and tried overdosing on Valium pills. He would later go on to say that he was involuntarily admitted there, that he only took it for his back pains, and because his wife at the time was on his case about him using drugs recreationally and drinking a lot. All in all, sound character. In 2010, he pled guilty to a different charge of felony theft and was sentenced to 10 years of probation and some hours of community service and a hefty fine of over 2.5 million. But then in December that year, this probation was revoked because he failed to report for it and failed to pay all of the court fines, so he was sentenced to six months in county jail. Once he served that, in 2013, his probation was revoked again, and he was charged because, again, he just robbed and stole from some property, so he pled guilty to felony criminal damage to property and was given four years to serve, but was paroled two years later in 2015. He had a prison fine that he needed to pay for, and at that moment in time, Mama June was doing pretty well. She actually got a new home for the family to move in, so she hired Gino to renovate it, to remodel it. What was that? Am I insinuating that he is using her for money and clout? No. Of, co of course not. No, he's a sound character. No, I believe in Gino. Gino? 
Yeah, there's only one person that I trust in this video. I go damn it, I said it at the beginning, honey boo boo. <laughs> Don't fuck with Alana. Actually, Pumpkin, the other sister, we're gonna speak about her a bit later. She's great as well, yeah. Everybody else can suck it. The romance develops as this guy is fixing her pipes in the kitchen, of course, and the bathroom in the new toilet, and the two of them start dating. And of course, he is a new person that is featured on Mama June Not Too Hot. We get to March 2019, and this is when somebody called the police at a gas station when they saw the altercation between Mama June and her boyfriend Gino. The police appears on the scene, they separate the two of them and kind of like probably put handcuffs on them to put them in the police car for the two of them to cool off. But then when they search their car, they find crack cocaine and also a crack pipe. Having crack cocaine in your possession would be considered as a felony and having a crack pipe is a misdemeanor charge. Instead of just letting them go, the two of them got charged with felony drug possession and misdemeanor unlawful possession of drug paraphernalia. So let's have a minute for one of my many questions throughout this video. And that is the question on drugs. She was doing TV shows non-stop ever since TLC's Toddlers and Tiaras. She literally didn't have much of a break. Maybe that one-year break when Honey Boo Boo was cancelled. But even then, she was on TV because they were doing reruns. Just based on her teeth decay and just the way her face is all jointed and transformed, it tells me that she was at least using these hard drugs for a couple of weeks. Meaning, why was this crew on set not reporting anything? Why not flag anything? I understand you need the views. I understand that. But then, aren't you also risking the show being cancelled? Instead of intervening, instead of doing anything, the producers saw the opportunity. Why not profit more on that? Let's rename that show. Let's make a spin-off in itself and rename it Mama June Not Too Hot Family Crisis. That is gonna bring more money and pull more people towards this while we are recording and seeing a decline on the screen. There was a point where you and Gio, you spent over $150,000 on drugs, is that right? A lot more than that, but... Um, really? A lot, lot, lots more. Like 10 times more than that. You know, Hold on, you're telling, me you spent a million, you're telling me you spent a million dollars on drugs? Um, over like, the, last, uh, the last year of our nation, we're now like six, over 16 months clean. Um, and, you know, for... You know, now I see my bank account looking nice. I don't think about those things like... I'm big into the recovery community, and the girls know that. I've definitely seen a bigger change. They say they say I'm more emotional than I used to be. She really wasn't the one to kind of like say I love you and stuff when she hung on the phone or when we left. But now she does that every time we get on the phone, every time I leave, and all that stuff. So it's definitely like a completely different person, even like pre addicted like before addicted. Mm. June would agree to pay court supervision and to 100 hours of community service, among other things. There's a full ass list. Basically, she was to just have some community service and not serve any time in jail. And from what I could find, Gina was actually facing 10 years. Because of that altercation, it seemed like it was physical, so they wanted to charge him for domestic violence as well. But then the charges just got revoked. He got community service as well. But due to this arrest, there was a rift in the family because Mama June sold her home without consulting anybody and she is also living in Georgia with Gina on their own. The family is just living miles away and haven't seen her for quite some time. And Alana actually moved in with her half-sister, Laureen, who got the legal guardianship of Alana, which is really a good thing. Like, that family just strikes me as completely normal. Pumpkin, Laureen's family. And I don't know what you get when you watch these interviews that I'm putting in, but Alana has completely transformed mentally. Just like from this carefree child to somebody looking stressed looking like she is constantly about to just burst, like she is holding this whole family on her own back, especially her own mom. 
it just seemed like for so many interviews as if she is the mother in this situation, as if she is raising her own mom and just trying to help her out on so many occasions. When she's 15, she doesn't have to do any of this. After the court hearing, the show was renamed Road to Redemption. And that is the truly sad thing, that after all of this, you just get lost in it. You get lost in the views, you get lost in doing all of this for a reality show, and you don't realize what actually matters. You don't know how many nights I cry myself to sleep just hoping and praying that you don't overdose. I can't give a lot of her it's like I'm drowning. June would miss Alana's first day in high school. He just wouldn't be present. He just wasn't there. And Pumpkin, on the other end, would be very much happy to take care of her. But she knew that she can't replace her own mother. And also that the problem is that she is living with Gino for this show to continue. That she doesn't any longer see what is truly important. That she just lost in this reality life. Just from the body language in all of these interviews that I kept playing, it just seems like Alana has had enough. Not necessarily enough of being in the spotlight, but just enough of this unnecessary drama that came along with it. Which brings me to the point, where are we now? What is going on in their lives now? From what I could see, the TV series, the Not Too Hot, is still on. They aired, I think, last episodes of the season in June. So it's just a question of will it be renewed or not? Probably. Most probably, yes. Because they need to follow through with this relationship at where it goes. And if it doesn't go anywhere, then there will be the next one. June and Gino are still apparently together, but on the path to get sober. And in March 2021, June celebrated being sober for 14 months. Sugar Bear, Alana's dad, is still married to Jennifer, who he married back in the day, in about 2007. And according to the show, he is also approaching both June and Alana about speaking on health issues, because he had some diabetic scare and landed in a hospital. So he started up conversations with Alana because he is afraid that it might be hereditary. In a lot of sources, I have read that their source for stress is still financial issues. That June, even though she did sell that house, she sold it for a lot cheaper than she bought it for. So that didn't resolve paying all of the fines. But also you've got to think about the debts that they must have with whoever were they drug dealers. And that's something that they kind of keep mentioning and insinuating here and there but hasn't really been, like, set in stone. How much does the family actually owe? To whom? How are they paying that off? Is that putting them in more of a criminal trouble? It seems like it can lead to a different criminal career. Perfect for this crew that is just blindly going to sit behind their cameras and watch, like, what, drug dealings happen on screen, make a spin-off show on that, completely push this family into the ruins. Few weeks ago, Lorene gave birth to a baby boy and all of them rejoiced again to celebrate as a family. Because if you spotted something, that is the family usually only pops out girls. There's not many boys in this family. Possibly actually the only boy so far, if I'm following this right. All of the other daughters also only had girls. Correct me, somebody, true fans of this show will come for me. I know it. But hey, it's it's happy news on the horizon. Let's celebrate a bit. The baby's so cute. And as for Alana, she's still living with Loreen, taking care of her little cousins now. She's 15, so she's still in school. And she wants to, according to this interview that I watched at Entertainment Weekly, she wants to go to University of Texas. I don't really know if she knows what she wants to study yet, but she has career plans. And she is on Cameo, which basically allows people to interact with celebrities, reality stars, to have like a personal experience, kind of like your own meet up one-on-one -on -one or with your friends with a celebrity. So if you want to, you know, meet Honey Boo Boo, you can digitally. And that is the case, the true crime case surrounding Honey Boo Boo's life. 
This is the moment when I direct all of those questions that I have had in this video towards you. I think we can't discard, personally, the fact that Mama June was most probably a victim in a lot of these situations. The men in her life have had criminal careers before they met her. They either exploited her for money, for a roof above their head, and then you got a question why were certain men coming back into her life or entering her life after her celebrity status, after she became a public figure. But another reason why I can't feel we should stop discarding Mama June as a victim, at least partially, is because of how exploited she was by this whole industry. She didn't go into it as a strong-minded person. And we know, even by watching so many reality shows that are there right now, even if you do go into that as a strong-minded, intelligent, super smart, street smart, book smart person, all of these things, you can still just be exploited. They will still just try to milk you to get the most out of you. Usually, if you think of reality shows, that thing lasts for a season, some of them a couple of months, and then you're out of it. You can pull yourself out of that, like, however you were represented. But I don't think we know enough of the consequences on being on TV for 10 plus years, because it truly only happened in a couple of cases. The Kardashians, you know, Playboy mentioned how long that thing was for, and then somebody like Mama June and the Shannon family. Meaning that we can see her as the victim of the production houses that are out there to make as many shows as possible and to make them as entertaining as possible. But at some point, you gotta start seeing this for what it is. And that is a woman that is putting time after time a man above her family, above her own children. There are plenty of addictions on this show, but this is the one that just needs to be cut to the chase. And that's why we are here. We don't speak about these things often. We only speak them in the aftermath of events. Whereas here, we actually have the crew that is present in their day-to-day -day life for the past 10 years, noticing everything that is happening and keeping silent. And that makes them all guilty in this case. Everybody apart from any of those children. Because everybody else on that show was an adult and should have known better. But that is where we are leaving this intervention of Mama June's life at. And I shall be seeing you guys next week. I need a neck massage. Okay, don't say that on camera. Creeps are gonna be piling up in the comment. Do not get better fetishes. Okay, that's, that's how you're ending this video. So, to go.